All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started now. So welcome back to the TSC GK webinar series. I am goalkeeper director Lou Libertor. I am joined by our other goalkeeper director, Eric Vauder. And tonight we have with us a very special guest, Stefan Cleveland, who is now with the Seattle Sounders. He uh, has graciously agreed to give us some of his time. So welcome, Stefan. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, and so just to give everyone a little bit of background on how we're going to run tonight, it's a little bit different than our others so far. We are going to let Evie and Stefan have a little bit of a conversation uh, because they have a, a very good pre-existing player coach relationship that has uh, been going since well before um, 2009, I would say. And um, so please <laughs> hold your questions. Um, until about halfway through, I will kind of let you guys know when a good time to start asking your questions is. Um, and we're gonna cover everything from Stefan as a youth player, his journey to the college game, and now into his journey as a professional goalkeeper, which I know many of you have aspirations to play in college and as a goalkeeper at the next level, whether that's professional uh, or semi-professional. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Evie and Stefan. Thank you again, guys. Well, everyone, thanks for tuning in. And uh, this is our inaugural Tennessee Soccer Club goalkeeper fireside chat. And uh, we plan to do this throughout the year because I think uh, it's good for uh, you guys to hear from people who have been in your position and have gone on and, and achieved possibly the same goals that you all have in, in your minds and in your, and on your path. But, uh, uh, wanted to thank coach Lou and coach Jeff for getting us set up, uh, technologically so that we can do this. And of course I wanted to, uh, thank, uh, Stephen Cleveland for taking the time to, to join us and share his thoughts and his, uh, uh, experiences along his journey with you guys. Stefan, thanks for doing this. Uh, it's always great to see you and um, uh, we'll, we'll get right into it. Yeah, happy to help. Always, always good to chat. So you grew up, uh, you grew up in the Dayton, Ohio area. And uh, I think I first met you, I think maybe you were 12 or 13. Uh, you were playing, BK had called me, Coach BK had called me and said, Evie, I think I got a, I think I got a kid who's who's going to be special, and he's a goalkeeper, and he wanted me to, you know, you know, come and have a look at you and all that stuff, and and so I think that's when we first met. But uh, uh, you 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 played, if I'm mistaken here, I think if I'm not mistaken, you went to Miami Valley School and you played there. Yeah, uh, actually, great school because I, I got a couple of nephews that that went there and graduated from there. Um, so you played in high school. You of course played club ball, and then uh, you uh, you chose Dartmouth in the Ivy League to go to to play. Yeah. Uh, and then of course you had sort of a different uh, pathway because you know you finished in Dartmouth and still had a year of eligibility, uh, and that's when uh, that's when uh, you were actually home for Christmas, and I think we were training with the Galaxies, and you came over to train. Yeah. You said you were you were looking for a school. You had one year of eligibility. You were looking for a school to play at, um, and you, of course, you know you had done very well at the Ivy Leagues. But you were looking for a school that maybe had a shot at playing for a national championship. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, let's we'll take it up to that point, and then uh, then we'll we'll pick it up again. But if you would share with the guys, you know, sort of your 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 experiences starting as as a kid and and how you started playing goal and you know, playing high school and club and that whole thing. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I've been playing soccer as long as I can remember. Um, I think, first of all, my brother, who's much older than me, he's 13 years older than me, he was a goalkeeper, uh, and he was kind of the first one that got me into it. Um, you know, as being so much younger than him, I kind of looked up to him and kind of tried to do everything that he, he did. Uh, and so naturally, when I was about five years old, he at 18 would, you know, throw me in the goal, shoot on me, do my best, <laughs> uh, sometimes take a few in the face, but, uh, it started, it started off the goalkeeper career. And then, uh, I don't think we played with goalkeepers until I was about eight. Uh, and then I made my first club team. Uh, we, you know, I, everybody tried out 
at that time there were no goalkeepers, so everybody tried out. And then the coach said, "Hey, you know, go, we got goalkeeper training this Wednesday or whatever. Uh, whoever wants to come out, you know, you're more than welcome." So I came out, um, and I think that's kind of the first training session I remember, uh, and just kind of went up from there. As obviously, it's you know, youth soccer's changing, but I, for probably the first several years, two three years, I was playing you know half on the field, half in goal. Uh, and it was, I think, a great experience because it forced me to be, you know, have the mind of a field player, at least, you know, at least that young. Um, and you, you kind of understand the goalkeeper position better because you can understand what, you know, what the field players are supposed to be doing, you know, where they're going to be. You can, you know, help. It's much easier to coach them and uh, direct them during the game. And then, yeah, we got BK when I was about probably 10 or 11. Uh, made a massive difference for me in the club uh kind of the first high level coach that I had uh really made an impression on me and then he introduced me to you and I was actually just thinking I <laughs> the first camp I went to with you was uh way back when at, at Vanderbilt when Vanderbilt still had their men's team right um, right because uh, probably 2007 or 2008 uh, and then after that I think I trained with you about every summer at you know various camps whether you know, Vanderbilt that first year and then at Lipscomb and uh, UNC Wilmington. Uh, so just various camps throughout the summers at the San Jose one year. Um, and I think those summers were massive for me because those were the definitely the best goalkeeper coaching uh, sessions that I had, most uh, technical. And, but, you know, obviously they were only one, one, ten, one week, 10 days a year. Uh, so it was important for me to take a lot from those because – Take, take a lot in the sense of, you know, gain as much as you can in those seven, 10 days, but also how do you translate those to the other 51 weeks of the year and make yourself better? And I remember at uh, one of the sessions, it was at Lipscomb, uh, you made us keep a notebook and I actually still have mine. Um, from, this, is, this is from 2009 and uh, we, we had to write down the drills from, from every single day, every session, you gave us a grade, we had to grade ourselves. Um, yeah, here's, here's one day. It was, a, it was a tough session, but it's got, you know, got all the crossing drills kind of, I outlined what we did in the warm ups, uh, the theme of it, what I took from it, um, things like that. And I'm, and then you wrote a review, uh, things that I need to work on were basics, catching dives, high ball, uh, foot quickness and foot agility. So ladders, jump rope, tennis and cross training. We used to talk a lot about playing other sports, get your mind, you know, into other situations and, you know, tennis, uh, squash, whatever it be, especially racket sports are great for, for uh, footwork and cross training because that's such an important part of the goalkeeping drill. And then the third was communication and directing your defense. And I don't claim to be a, a big guy now, but I remember back then I was definitely a small guy. <laughs> uh, and it was hard for me to have a big presence on the field. Um, and, and sometimes it still is because I'm my personality is a bit shyer, but as soon as you step on the lines, I remember that was kind of the biggest thing through my whole whole uh, goalkeeper career and even still today is, is trying to improve communication, um, be more demanding, and then at, at this level be just as effective and precise as you can in communication because the, the time is, you know, the timing is much faster. So you, and, you know, guys, you know, especially with a bunch of fans in the crowd, um, it's, it's hard for them to hear. So you have to be loud, sharp, um, and get the message across effectively. Um, but anyways, so I yeah I went to uh, went to Maya Valley, which like you said was a great institution, a terrible athletic institution, uh, but great academic institution. Um, but it it was honestly good for me because as a goalkeeper, I, saw, I faced a lot of shots. Um, and then I think club soccer is where. Uh, and that's where a, I don't wanna, I don't interrupt you. That's a key for goalkeeper development is is playing you know on a team you know even if even if it's a goalkeeper if you if you think in your heart, this is a bad team, that's the team you want to be on as a goalkeeper, isn't it? Cause you, you, it, you, as you said, you, you, you get so many shots, you get put in game situations and it's a situation where if you don't play well, your team's probably not going to win. You don't have a chance of winning. So there, you know, there's an inherent, not pressure, but it's an expectation I think that helps develop you as a goalkeeper uh, that, you know what, I'm on a, I'm on a team that, I'm a key player on. I'm not just the guy at the back who's uh, wears a different color shirt, and, you yeah. know, and can use his hands. And you know, and and getting back to the to the to the journal, 
you know, uh, Tennessee soccer club kids, you know, Coach Lou and I are going to institute that. And we were planning on instituting that before we had the, the COVID thing and having to stay at home. But that's part of your overall development as well. Um, uh, so sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, I think a lot of times kids, you know, I hear from parents, oh, he's on a terrible team or, you know, he's on a bad team. And I keep saying, that's the best thing, you know, at this age, that's what you want. You want to be on the bad team. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I remember it was uh, 2010, I believe. I think I was in, uh, in a camp with you and I was in Spain, blew everybody out of the water at the World Cup. And uh, I, you said, who was, had what goalkeeper had the hardest job this this World Cup and everybody was you know throwing out these you know random goalkeepers and you said no is Casillas because he had such little to do but that required the most amount of focus but in order to get into those positions where you're focused and you have you know you've seen these situations before that's why you know Buffon is still able to play at you know 40 plus years old because he's seen every situation and so the mistakes that he's made, they've, they've already happened in each situation and he knows the right spots to be, but that's because he's been in so many game situations. And so when you're in, you know, these, these teams where you see a lot of shots, those are the teams where you see these game situations and make improvements because you can't, as much as, you know, we try in goalkeeper sessions and in trainings, what you can't replicate the games right. um, and the, the timing, because in a, in a game, you don't, you can't say, okay, finish on a good rep. Um, and so I right. think that right. you feel that pressure, you have the timing, everybody's, you know, trying to win, uh, and mistakes happen and they you know, mistakes are a blessing because you learn from them. Um, but then you have to learn from them. Uh, and I think when you, the more opportunity you see, uh, in games is, is when you're going to make the mistakes. Uh, and those are the best learning opportunities. Uh, and along yes. those lines, I remember in, between 10th and 11th grade, I had to find a new club. Um, and I, the, and in Dayton, uh, there weren't any clubs that I was really interested in. So I had to go to Columbus and I was either going to go to blast FC, which was, um, a, a standard club, a smaller club, but still very good. Um, or crew Academy. And I remember I went to both tryouts. I knew, I knew I had a spot on blast FC because their goalkeeper was kind of, uh, he's, they, they wanted a new goalkeeper and then, uh, crew, I remember I talked to crew and I had to make a decision for blast. And they said, listen, we don't know whether you're going to be in the academy team, developmental team, or if you're on the academy team, we're going to have at least two, you know, every people, both are going to play. And I remember, I remember talking on the phone to BK and I was thinking, yeah, this is such a big decision for me because it's the last two years of high school and go to a crew, a big academy, successful, or go to Blast Club, very successful. And I chose Blast because I knew that's where I was going to play. And that's where I was going to get seen and get the game time. Uh, and it worked out very well for me uh, because I know I would have Blast, again, a smaller organization, didn't have the best you know goalkeeper training every week. Like I would have gotten the crew. And as important as that is, playing games is so important. Um, yeah, the game's I, a teacher. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, got, I got 10 times more games at Blast in those two years than I ever would have at uh, Crew. Uh, and I'm, I'm so thankful for that because that, and that, that's where you get seen for college is, is playing. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of how my high school ended up and through, and I'm I was talking to my coaches as far as college recruiting goes. I was talking to my coaches in high school and just kind of getting a gauge of where, what kind of conference my level was at. And they said, you know, with uh, kind of lining academics up with athletics, I think the Patriot League or Ivy League would have been the best fit for me. And so that junior junior year spring break, my parents and I took a road trip over two weeks to uh, probably 10 or 11 different schools uh, between those two conferences. And they're all pretty close up in the Northeast. And then I tried to I email the coaches early, talk to as many as I could, met with them. And, you know, a lot of them hadn't seen me play, but just having conversations, see how I like them, see their programs, see the school campus, whatnot. Uh, and then from those discussions and visits, I picked, uh, I believe I picked four or five schools and went to a bunch of camps that summer between junior and senior year, because for goalkeepers, camps are massive. Um, because in, in, when colleges come to scout, 
it's they only see three four actions for a goalkeeper a game uh, that are really going to make an impact on them. And maybe it's a great game, maybe it's a bad game. Um, and it's it's but they they also understand that if you have a bad game as a goalkeeper, they understand it's kind of a roller coaster. Um, but getting you in a training environment, getting you to play in an all star game or you know whatever however their, their camps are run. Uh, is is massive for them because they can see your habits, they can see what kind of personality you are, how you would fit in, uh, so much more than they can see at a camp, and especially for a goalkeeper. Uh, that that's so important for them. So I went to four or five camps, um, and I, honestly, Dartmouth was the the perfect fit for me uh, academically. I loved their campus. I loved what they had to provide academically. Uh, it challenged me uh, in a very good way. And then I I liked their team. I liked the coach. Um, and then. So I, I ended up going to Dartmouth, uh, and it was kind of the best of both worlds. And then, and, and it was perfect for me because I knew I was not at the level of an ACC or, you know, the Big Ten or the big schools at that time. And I think if I had tried to, I, don't, I wasn't even being scouted by any of them, honestly. But if I had tried, if I had somehow gotten there, I would have been such a small fish in a big pond that I, I would have improved for sure because it would have been, you know, uh, a, learn a lesson every day. Uh, but at the same time, you need to be able to swim. You need to get traction. You need to get those games like I was talking about. And yeah. so my first year I didn't play at all. Uh, it was very frustrating, but it's part of the goalkeeper life. Um, and then sophomore year I was expecting to play because the guy that was playing before, uh, left and we got two freshmen in. And so I kind of, felt like it was my job to lose uh, being the only returning goalkeeper and we split games for about half the season. And then he played probably six games in a row. And then I played the last couple of games uh, and it was such a frustrating season because I felt like I had everything on the table and it was mine to lose. And then and I, it was a very, very disappointing season for me. Um, but then the, I had a fantastic goalkeeper coach at the time. And I think so that winter and that, spring of my sophomore year uh, was massive. He really in, instituted in me how important the mental game is uh, and confidence. Uh, and that was, he turned my game into a complete 180. I was confident in myself. I had positive self-talk. I you know, made a mistake in training. I wasn't yelling at myself. I was saying, okay, next one. It's okay. Mistakes. Right. right. Um, and that, that was 100% what changed my game around. I technically, we worked on a few things, but the mental aspect of the game, especially in this position was the ga a game changer for me. Uh, yeah. and then I had a very, very successful junior senior season, uh, and moved on and go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, share with the kids what, you know, and everybody says we want to play in college and, and, but share with the kids, you know, a typical, you know, collegiate goalkeeper day during season, you know, um, and, and, you know, take them through preseason and the stuff you're expected to do and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. So in college, um, preseason, preseason is tough because especially depending on where you go to school, it can be, uh, you know, definitely down in Nashville or in anywhere Tennessee or adverse in the South. It's very hot, very, very hot. Uh, and you're doing two days, sometimes three days, uh, and that is, that is all you're doing. You're playing soccer, you're eating and you're sleeping. Uh, and it's, it's demanding. And in college, they expect you to be very fit. Um, and a lot of times pass, you know, some of the fitness tests that, that, that the, uh, the field players have to pass sometimes at different levels. Uh, but, but it's, it's a lot of work. And I remember the first goalkeeper session, I, or the first training session, first time we played, uh, I was like, wow, these shots are coming in a lot harder because, you know, at 18 years old, is playing everybody with 17, 18 years old is a lot different than playing with everybody 18 to 22 years old. Yeah. Um, that, and you build, because you build a lot of strength, um, you really become men in that time. And so these seniors are, uh, they're kind of put you in your place um, mentally and physically. Uh, you're, you're no longer a big fish. Um, so I think mentally it's an adjustment because that's kind of your life. You're expect you're, it's, it's very demanding. Um, and you're not the only goalkeeper or one of two goalkeepers. There's, usually three or four goalkeepers competing for that one spot. Um, and, you know, then, so then you get through preseason, you're doing, you know, two a days, um, usually one technical session a day, one tactical session a day. Um, and, you know, they're very, they, they don't push you too hard. They don't, they're not going to kill you, run you into the ground, but you definitely push your limits. 
Uh, and then once you get into the season, it's um, Dartmouth had classes in like in the kind of through the day, but all classes stopped at 4 p.m. So I know a lot of colleges can train in the morning time. Dartmouth always had to train in the afternoon. So we'd wait, I wake up, you know, breakfast, class, lunch, whatever. And then from class or from classes all day, go to training four to six, 7 p.m., um, go to dinner. And then I kind of after dinner, uh, you're doing homework, you're in the library, you're studying with friends, um, you're, you're kind of doing work. And then it's the next day is the same. Uh, but it's, it's important that you kind of are able to separate, you know, the academics from the athletics, because once you step on the field, all you can think about is athletics, all you right. can think about is soccer. Um, right. for me, it was a blessing because it gets you away from soccer, it gets you away from school. Uh, so you, you have a tough test or a hard test coming up. I think I mean, exercising in general, but especially soccer, getting your mind off of it is so beneficial to how you can perform academically. Uh, but then also getting your mind off of soccer is beneficial to how you can perform athletically. But if you're able to separate those, compartmentalize them in your mind, take, take them as two separate entities and really go hundred percent at them and not try to merge them into one and give each one half an effort is, is really crucial in, in being successful. And, and did you guys have strength and conditioning along during throughout the week as well? Yeah. During, uh, during season, we would have one, one, maybe two days a week. Um, and I think they would kind of change it depending on if, you know, who was playing and who wasn't playing. Um, but then come the off season, I remember my freshman winter or yeah, is, is definitely, that's a time when a lot of, a lot of scrawny freshmen become a little bit stronger. <laughs> yeah. You can run the ball a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, then in the winter and in springtime, you hit it two, three times a week. Uh, and that's kind of where you you gain some strength and and power, and can make some strides there, yeah. while still you know training. And it's fall is definitely demanding because you're tra traveling, playing for games. Um, but I would say that the off seasons, uh, winter and spring are are almost equally as demanding. Minus they're just a bit better because you don't have to travel. Um, but you know they have the six a.m. Thursday morning sessions because they can you know you don't need to be ready for to perform on a Saturday. Um, so and, any and, and what gate, what, what was the, you know, you said you, your sophomore year, you were splitting time with a guy. What was the impetus for you taking over the position? Did he have a bad game? Did he, did he sort of fall off of form and the coach put you in and you ran with it or how did that occur? So we were splitting games and then he, he actually played for probably four or five games in a row. I remember we were playing Harvard and he, in the first half, he gave up two very, very bad goals and he, and then they switch us at halftime, which that's oh. so, so rarely <laughs> happens. It never happens. It yeah. was tough for him. <laughs> um, yeah. But he, uh, he, yeah, they switched us at halftime and then I played the rest of the season minus the last game because I got injured. Uh, so then I, I played probably the next three or four games. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, and that was a tough year, um, between the two of us, because we were both coming in this position, really, really wanting it, demanding it, um, and pushing each other. But there also was a little bit of animosity between us. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, that next year when I won the starting job, uh, really early in the season and we kind of fell into our roles, we became much better friends. And we both became much, much better teammates and better goalkeepers because of it. Um, huh. Instead of, instead of thinking, you know, oh, I hope he, you know, makes a mistake here so that maybe I get an edge this week. You know, we're hoping for each other to get better because yeah. if he's getting better, I'm getting better. Right. Uh, and we're giving each other, good, you know, good. Not that we were giving bad services ever, um, but you're you're really focused on the success of each other because as a goalkeeper, you're a group, um, and whoever it just whoever's playing is the representation of that group. Um, yeah. if, if one person's successful and the team wins, you're all successful. Right. Um, and I think that was, that was huge for us because I played those last two years. We won the Ivy league those, uh, my last two years. And so we had a successful goalkeeper group. We all got much better. Uh, and then I went to, I had to transfer, went to Louisville and then he, so then he played his senior year, um, and they won the Ivy League again, and then he ended up going pro after that as well. Uh, so what, even though he only played 
uh, one full year, us really pushing each other, becoming good friends, um, made, made a world of a difference for both of us. I, yeah. I don't think either of us would have been where it would be if we had continued the animosity and, and there's, you know, there's obviously always a bit of a rivalry, um, but the, the uh, negative connotations to the rivalry was not beneficial at all. Right. So you, so you, you, you have a good senior year, you show up at, uh, up at the galaxy's training just before Christmas and uh, we're talking and you say, Evie, I think I've got another year of eligibility and I want to, I want to go someplace where I can win a national championship. So I want to go to the ACC or, you know, I think you had narrowed it down and I, and, and I thought, okay, well, I know Ken Lola at Louisville pretty well because he was at Duke and that whole thing. Um, and you had a couple of other schools, I think Ohio State and, and I think Xavier was one of your other. Um, so I, I called and I'm, I'm telling this story so that it, the, my tennis, our Tennessee goalkeepers understand this because Lewis and I harp on them about this all the time. Uh, but I, I called Ken and, and you know, I said, hey, Ken, uh, you know, do you guys need a goalkeeper? Well, we might. I said, well, and I told their story. And said, Stephen, you know, he's got, he finished at Dartmouth. He's got one year of eligibility left. Ken's first question to me was, can he play with his feet? <laughs> and, and, and that was an area that you had improved exponentially since I'd seen you last. And when yeah. you showed up for those couple of training sessions in Ohio, you could play with your feet, man. And I was like, dude, the guy can play with his feet. And that was the first question that he asked, you know, not, not can he stop shots or can he get crosses or anything like that? Can he play with his feet? So just, just so you kids know, coach Lou and I are not just nagging you. There's a method to our madness. We want you to get better with your feet because top level coaches, that's one of the first things they ask about goalkeepers. So anyway, so you go, you go to, uh, uh, you, you transfer into Louisville. And you've got a year to chase that national championship. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, I think, well, so that after, I didn't really realize I had an extra year of eligibility until nearing the end of my senior year. I think we were finished, finished the training session and my, my head coach, uh, Chad Riley, who's at Notre Dame now, just kind of mentioned a side comment to me. He was like, hey, by the way, I got an email from a coach. Uh, you have an extra year of eligibility. Like, we can talk about it later. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> I, can, I can play another year? Um, but he, uh, I, I couldn't play at the, in the Ivy League due to a couple of various rules. Uh, so I knew I had to transfer. And then we finished the season. I talked to him about it. And, uh, and I, was, I was really debating between whether to go, to go pro uh, then or take an extra year. And those last two years at Dartmouth, we had really good teams and lost uh, kind of heartbreakers both years in the second round of the the NCAA tournament. Um, and I remember I actually talked to Bob Lilly, who used to coach yes. Bushy back in the day. Yes. He was at uh, Rich uh, uh, Rochester, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I I just decided that you know I I had this huge hunger uh, to get deeper in the in the NCAA tournament because uh, I I really I felt um, I just felt really uneasy about how we went out the past couple of years, and I knew. You know, I knew Louisville was going to have a very good team. Uh, I think they had they had a lot of stars returning. Uh, they were a good team. Are they actually? They did not have a great record before, but you know, if you look on paper, they had a very very good team. Uh, and so I, you know, went down, met with Ken. Uh, was amazed by their soccer facility. Um, yes. That you know, kind of the tradition that they have there. How many MLS players they'd had, um, and you know, playing the ACC was kind of a dream of mine that I. I didn't didn't get in the in the Ivy League because you know, I, I wasn't playing against uh, Virginia or Wake Forest, you know, week in week out, uh, and I think that that's it. It's an amazing amazing league uh, because you get we would have at Dartmouth like two of those games a year where it's like you know you're really gritting your teeth at them, but now you know everybody was gritting their teeth to play us, uh, right. which is right. you're, you're on the other side of things. Every game's tough, but everybody's fighting against that. Uh, Cause that's the one game they want out of the year. Um, but so it was, it was, so I went in there. Um, I kind I, you know, kind of knew that I was going to be the guy, uh, but by no means, you know, that's from the coaches. I knew that wasn't going to be given to me by the coaches, but you know, 
the, the people you have to earn the respect for, from is the guys on the field, the, the other 10 guys that you're going to be playing with and other 25 guys in the locker room. Uh, so I think instantly I was, you know, trying to be a leader, trying to gain respect uh, organically, uh, because if, you know, you have, you have to have the respect of the team as goalkeeper, they have to trust you, uh, prove yourself on the field, uh, no matter what you say off the field, it, it means nothing to them until they see you make saves, they see you make the right pass, make the right decisions and, you know, keep, keep the team in games and win them points uh, at the end of the day. That's because that's what your job is. And that's, that's what they trust you to do. Um, so I, yeah, so I, we went to Louisville. We, we had a very good year. Uh, we, Wake Forest, uh, we lost, we were so close to winning a couple trophies uh, and we fell short on the regular season title and the ACC title, a champion or tournament title. And then uh, we got to the elite eight. And unfortunately we ran into Stanford, who was a, a very, very good yes. college soccer team yes. for about two, three years. Yes. Uh, and they, they beat us two, either two zero or two one. Um, and it was, it was kind of devastating to get that far um, while, you know, losing, but I think getting, getting that far was still an accomplishment over, you know, what I had felt before. Uh, and, and we had a very good team and get, getting, being on a, on a good team is, is critical to, uh, getting recruited into the MLS and being scouted. Uh, right. no matter you, you can, if you're not on a good team, you know, you, you can still get seen cause you're going to make saves, but getting with a good team, helping your team win is going to get you on the stage to where people are going to see you and appreciate you. Right. So I think that, that was the biggest thing for me. Uh, and then that's where I. I ended up getting called in late to the MLS combine and, uh, and then ended up being drafted by the Chicago fire. Uh, but playing with my feet was, I remember, uh, again, a camp with you. I remember, or I think it was with, uh, John, uh, John Bush was there, Bushy was there. And he was, I think you were telling, either he was telling me or you were telling us about a time when he was in college and he would just go out to the field, take a bag of balls and just kick balls down the field, just kick them. And, I saw, I got to college my, in the spring. That's what I did. I just yeah. took a bag of balls out, went by myself. No, you know, not a person in sight and hit one a full bag of balls in my left foot, full bag of balls in my right foot. And it was so uncomfortable with my right foot for so long. All I was doing was trying to get the ball in the air, just swing, swing my wooden peg through it as fast as I could. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, you start to get develop, you know, a little bit of feeling for it and then you can drive it a little bit more. Um, but that it's just re purely repetition. Uh, and then as I found out, you know, when I was as a pro, that is one of my better assets. Uh, people, yes. you know, the coaches really respect me for my ability to play with my feet, hit, hit a good clean ball, um, and, and make the, make the right decisions. Uh, yeah. and I think that's, that's a massive, massive uh, attribute that I have and that was just developed over myself um, and just pure time time and practice just spending time with the ball yeah exactly and just kicking it yeah so you go so you go to Chicago you're 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 probably started out as the number three and yeah you're training and and uh, um, so tell us about you know tell us about being in Chicago tell us about uh, your I think you were up with the full team for a full year and then they sent you to Lansing to get some game time again. Is that correct? Yeah. So I was, uh, I was in Chicago my first year. Uh, there were three of us. I was third string, two older guys. Uh, and then one of them got injured for a while. And I, I uh, this was 20, uh, 2017. And so I, there were only two of us and I was back up for a little while. And I remember one of my first games on the bench, we were playing Seattle at home uh, and it was a sold out game because they had just won the, they had won the league in 2016 or yeah, won the cup in 2016, sold out. Everybody was there, you know, see Clint down to George, you know, all the stars. And <laughs> it was like the 60th minute uh, we were winning and our goalkeeper go comes out for a challenge. I think for sure it's a red card. Um, and my heart just sinks. I'm like, no, this is like my first game on the bench in front of 40, uh, 35, that I'm scared, like so nervous uh, and was not a red card. Uh, so I, I didn't end up playing, but I was on the bench for a little while. Um, and it was, it was a really good experience. Uh, and I think 
and then so then next year, uh, my second year, they, they kind of put trust in, in a young guy. Um, and he didn't have a great year. He ended up being five years in Chicago or five games in Chicago. Right. Uh, and I think looking back on that Seattle game, had I gone in, I just mentally like the amount of nerves that I felt to go in, um, in retrospect meant I, you know, I was just not ready for it. And right. I remember that first game, uh, played in Salt Lake in August of 2018. I, I felt so ready. Uh, I'm, it was such a frustrating year and a half, just not playing, not getting any opportunities to play. Um, and I remember my goalkeeper coach just saying, you have to be patient. And when the time comes, you have to take it. And, but right now what you can do practice, get better, feel your confidence and play the games in your, it's like a movie, play it in your head, right. you know, make all the saves, um, envision everything. And I'm that first game. I didn't feel any nerves. Uh, I ended up playing four games after that. The first game I was man of the match. Um, and I think I was man of the match the next two games. So three of my first five games were man of the match and we beat LAFC at home, uh, was, which was an amazing, amazing experience because they were a very, very good team that year. Uh, and then, so I was, after my second year, I was pumped. Uh, year, you know, because of the last seven games of the year. Uh, so I was excited for the next year, thinking uh, I knew they were going to bring another an experience. And that year came, I made a mistake in prison. I dropped the third strand. And it's just so frustrating. My mentality was beat. Yeah. Uh, and there was somebody else in, and I was uh, struggling to, struggling to mentally. So then I sent me out on, and so I was actually, I don't know what they were doing in Chicago at the time. They, we had four goalkeepers, um, two older guys, and then I, uh, and then there were two younger guys, and I was four string at the time, and it was just, it was clear that I wasn't going to play. Uh, so they sent me on loan to Lansing, uh, which initially I was not happy. Uh, I I was happy to go on loan someplace, but I wanted to go to. Because Lansing was USL League One, uh, so right. Tier Three, right? And I wanted to go into Tier Two um, because it was a new. I didn't want to go to Tier Three. Drop down two levels. Um, so I was looking for other teams. Couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't really find one. So I sucked it up. Went there. Uh, um, you know, had a good attitude about. It. I was going to play. Brought brought confidence with myself, uh, and then it means, you know, four five of the best months of my life. Um, yeah. I was so happy I went there. I made amazing friends. I uh, it just kind of in my life. It was a pivotal moment because I was playing. The team was doing really well. I, I built a lot back up. Um, I you know made some really really good friends in, in Lansing. Uh, I, I had a, I had a great time uh, and like, kind of like we talked about earlier, playing just you right. you you kind of I was losing with confidence um, and. Confidence, not arrogance, uh, which is you know massive difference, uh, because there were some very humbling moments through that, and it was, it was rocky at points for sure. Um, but on the on the other end of it, I, I came out a much better goalkeeper with 20 games of experience. Uh, right. And then, so after those 20 games, those are 20 more games, um, you know, so 1,800 minutes that I would have not had otherwise. Uh, and those right. I've seen, you know, probably 100, 200 different situations in those, in those 20 games that I would never have seen in practice in Chicago. Uh, so going right. back to Chicago, I, you know, that in the, that off season, I ended up getting traded to Seattle. Uh, and I think one of the main reasons that I ended up coming to Seattle was because I played those games. Had I not, had I not played those games, whether it was tier two, tier three, whatever, I think I really would have fallen off the radar, uh, for a lot of teams. Uh, and I think, those five games in the MLS were massive for me because I, you know, got my name on the radar and then kind of stayed relevant by playing at a lower level uh, and stayed sharp. So you're in Chicago. This is, you know, you played some games, but I'm going to take you to probably with, which was the most fun game you played in. You guys do the Schweinsteiger retirement tour. Yeah. And you get to play it in, at Bayern at Allianz Arena. Tell us about that. That game i will say i was very nervous <laughs> there were <laughs> seventy thousand people there or sixty five thousand people there 
all just, you know, screaming their heads off uh, for Bashi. Uh, so we went over there. So Schweinsteiger came to Chicago. This was his uh, second year there and kind of in, and then we went, we went back to uh, Munich as a tribute game for him. Uh, we made, made it a four or five day trip. Uh, it, it was an amazing time. And remember we, we went to training one day and at their training ground and it was an open training and there were, you know, 15 to 2000 people there at open yeah. training. And I was, none of us had it, had a clue it was, it was open. Uh, and I remember we waited so long in the locker room because Basti went around and signed every single autograph. Uh, and they were, I remember for honestly, probably 30 minutes it, during that training, they were just chanting football God. Uh, and right. it, he is, it's, you, you have no capacity of understanding what it is like over there uh, for, for those kind of people. Uh, I think he, he, the, uh, the government in Germany gave him a medal of honor actually for, I mean, for being a pro athlete, which is bizarre, uh, cause right. it would never happen here. Yeah. Uh, that was, so that game, I remember we were driving up to the game in Allianz arena, uh, which is an incredible arena. And there was, we were like a mile away from the stadium and we were, there was just a line, a single, single file line of people. Uh, just like walking into the stadium, waiting to get in, uh, and so many Schweinsteiger jerseys, Germany jerseys, Bayern jerseys, Manchester United jerseys, everything. Um, and I, I'm starting that game was amazing. Uh, it was <laughs> so, so tell us about that. I mean, tell us, take us out of the locker room and the warm up and the whole thing. You've got here's a kid from Dayton, Ohio, looking around the Allianz Arena, which <laughs> which is huge, right? And it's yeah. it's it's loud and it is you know it's 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 a Mecca if you're a soccer guy. It's, yeah. it's just, I mean, you know. So, you know, it, it was a tribute game. So it was a friendly, um, I can only, and so, you know, everybody was very nice. Uh, nobody was, nobody was taunting me saying, you know, you're the worst goalkeeper to ever play soccer in your life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there was, you know, no animosity there, uh, which made it uh, much less stressful. Uh, but it was, I remember, you know, in warm ups, everybody's filing in and just slowly filling up. Uh, and I was, you know, very focused, like, you know, I'm going to have a good game, I'm going to focus. Right. And, and we, we walked out uh, for the game and looking around, so focused. And then I remember the whistle blew. And for the first five minutes, I was just like, like <laughs> how is this? This is amazing. Like, there are so many people here. This is such, like, such a legendary field. So many, you know, incredible uh, tales have been played out on this field uh, with, with these players. Uh, you yes. know, like Robin, Mueller, Neuer, you know, all, the most amazing – uh, Bayern Munich players, players ever. Uh, so th that was that was incredible. And then after the game, when he uh, he you know he he ran around the field, uh, you know, thanking everybody. It was it was like a movie. It was like yeah. watching the end of Miracle. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it was incredible. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know if Coach Lou, if we if we uh, compiled any questions from the uh, so I'm going to audience for yeah. Um, so I've got uh, Nate. Nate Morrow here has his hand raised. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make him a, a panelist and allow All right. him to ask your question, and then I'm going to take him off the panelist. Um, and then after that, we'll take uh, four or five questions, and we'll do that the same way. So if you have a question for Stefan, uh, let's raise our hand in the feature, which is down on the bottom there, um, and we'll, we'll do it that way. Okay, everyone? All right, Nate, can you hear us? Nate, are you there? Yep. All right, what's your question for, for Stefan? Um, one question I had was, how often would you practice on like off seasons or like if you don't have practice, would you ever practice this on your own? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's where the biggest strides are had uh, because uh, you know, in the spring season, especially in the Ivy league, they had very restricting rules uh, and we couldn't train all that much as a team. Um, but I think in, in those days where you have off as a team are the days that you can be on uh, doing what you want to work on. And I think at a time like right now um, is an amazing time to work on the things that you want to work on. So I would, I would go out either, I guess, by myself, uh, work on kicking uh, and, and, you know, driving the ball, hitting a clean ball uh, with both, you know, left and right foot because, you know, that's a very 
fast way to make an impression on a coach. Uh, if they see you can hit a, a good clean ball, that's going to be uh, a very bright point in their eyes. Uh, and then because, you know, everybody can save a ball. Um, but I think that that is one feature that will make you stand out. And then I just, I remember they were, after my freshman year, I grabbed a, a couple guys and then it, they graduated and my sophomore year grabbed a couple different guys, sophomore, junior year. We would go out to the field and just do shooting. Um, they, and we would always make a game out of it, uh, a competition to where, you know, if I caught the ball, they wouldn't get the ball back. If I bobbled it, they'd get it back. Uh, we have, you know, 15 balls. If they scored three or four goals, whatever, uh, whatever the number was, they would win. I would do 10 push-ups. If I would keep them out, um, you know, I would win. So I think kind of making a competition out of it um, is, is always important. But I think just getting on the ball as much as you can uh, and then kind of talking, I, you know, either what things you want to work on, talk to the coaches, see what they think you should work on, and then that's the time to go out and work on them. Uh, I think, yeah, I, there were plenty of days, plenty of days where I'd be out there by myself uh, working. Great question, Nate. Uh, now we're going to have uh, Kylie. She's going to join us, so give us a second here. Doesn't so, so Kylie, why don't you go ahead and type it in because it's not letting that happen, okay? So, all right. So, two questions here. Uh, how important is nutrition for you as a goalkeeper, as a professional athlete, and how has that changed from maybe when you were a youth player to now? I think uh, nutrition's. I think which is very important in general. Um, I think as a youth player, I, I was never uh, a bad eater, but I didn't pay too much attention to what I ate. Um, and now I'm just making sure to have, you know, get the proper amount of protein, carbs, vegetables. Uh, I don't, there are definitely a lot of guys that follow very specific diets. Uh, personally, I don't, I haven't experimented with it too much, but I do make sure that I'm getting all the proper nutrients, you know, having a carb, um, some sort of protein, whether it's a meat or, you know, tofu, whatever it be. Um, and then getting you know, greens. Uh, and then I've actually, I got a Vitamix, uh, recently, which is an amazing blender. And I have been making smoothies like every day. Uh, and you can, th you can throw anything in a, in a Vitamix and, comes out in this creamy smoothie and so it, i mean smoothies are a great way salads you know all, i think and i just great ways to get nutrition vitamins um but i think the biggest thing for me is just eliminating like the sweets and and the bad food um because you know superfoods are they're great for you but i think what's going to be more detrimental than it like there's going to be more negatives to eating bad food than there are positives to super, uh, you know, to eating superfoods. Uh, so trying to get as many of the, the greens in as you can and, you know, cutting out the sweets and I've never really been a candy person and I'm thankful for it because it's not a massive temptation for me. Very good. Um, I think I really want to highlight this because uh, right now in this era we're dealing with a lot of, you know, carbs are bad, this or that is bad. And the reality is guys, girls, um, as an athlete, carbs are good, uh, especially in the forms of whole wheats, pastas. Um, you know, you get carbs from fruits as well. And I think it's extremely important that we take that in that rice. Those things are not bad. They are actually the foundation for you as an athlete. So that was awesome to hear, Stefan. Um, yeah, I think along with that, having good carbs is massively important. So having, you know, I think carbs in general are good for you, but having like brown rice or whole wheat bread instead of like the bleached uh like white wonder bread um because that you know that has all the nutrients just taken out of it uh so or you know quinoa couscous you know things like that that there are definitely healthier carbs than others fantastic uh 100 uh we we harp on it quite a bit and i think it's just great to hear it from someone who's who's been in these shoes and is now where a lot of our kids want to go um Another question that's kind of come, uh, I think we've already kind of touched on it, but if, if I'm a goalkeeper at home alone, um, 
in the house or in the backyard, um, what, what is your favorite drill to do to work on some form of goalkeeping? I think um, one of the things that I have always struggled with was getting um, from a set position, getting a good, a good step into my dive. Uh, so I think putting, you know, maybe having a couple of cones that you step over and then putting a ball pretty far away um, so that you really have to step and extend for it is good. Or remember in college, I used to, I would stagger uh, four balls on this side, four balls on this side, and they'd be like, they'd be about four yards apart. And I would start in line here. Um, and then I'd dive, dive to this one, get up fast, dive to this one, get up fast and four yards apart. So if you're getting, getting from ball to ball, that's, you know, that's covering half the goal. Uh, so that's, that's the range you need. Uh, but I think doing it quick, it's a little, it's a good little fitness drill. Uh, and I think it, it really forces you to, to step and get some power out of it. Uh, I, I like that one a lot. Cool. Great. Um, if we look at our videos we put on YouTube, there's some very similar drills to what uh, Stefan has outlined. Um, and I think it's just great to hear that Stefan didn't, you didn't really make it an excuse to not train on your own, uh, especially with some of the more restrictive rules within the Ivy league in the spring. Um, for those that don't know in the Ivy league, the, the amount you can train in the off season as a team um, in terms of with a soccer ball is very different than what you could do at a Louisville or even a uh, middle Tennessee, which is a, or a Lipscomb uh, for that matter. So, um, how long let's let's i'll ask this part of the question how long um did you spend a day on your own or with that small group i think that's a piece that needs to be highlighted i would i mean it would kind of be we would find a time a grant of time and then go out until we got tired uh so it would kind of be or until one of us had to do something so usually at least an hour um but kind of once you get out there you're having fun uh you're enjoying it uh and then until it's kind of until you're like, Oh crap, I have to, you know, go to class or go get dinner or you know, something like that. Um, but I, I was out there, you know, especially with the shooting drills, it was usually until his leg was about to fall off that he'd keep shooting on me and then he'd step in goal and I'd shoot a little bit. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing that, uh, that highlights is even someone who's got the, the heavy academic load of an Ivy league still is finding an hour a day to go do extra. And I'm, I, I, I hope I'm not being remiss in this and saying that you probably do this even on days when you had training in the spring, if I'm from what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Cause we would do an, in, I mean, in the spring we would have other, uh, you know, small like captain's practices where you're playing or lifts and especially on the days where there's lifts uh, is days where you could get out to the field. Uh, Cause I, I was I like to pair, you know, some lifting, with soccer you know, trying to get some soccer in every day uh because lifting is great for you uh, but kicking a ball is also great for you uh and it's a little bit more applicable applicable um not to say that you shouldn't lift or you know try to get stronger because uh, they're also they're very important but applicable in different ways and you can do them separately you know lifting isn't going to destroy your ability for that day or take away from soccer that day you can kind of do them in parallel fantastic great um, so, uh, we'll go, we've got three more questions here and then I think we'll, we'll call it a night that way you can, but, um, the, we have a question here, Kylie put her question in. It's what advice would you give to, uh, an upcoming college goalkeeper? So we have, there's a number of, of our goalkeepers on the call right now who are seniors and they are going into their freshman years, uh, in August. Um, and so there, some advice for them would be absolutely fantastic. I think um, going in as a freshman, there's going to be some goalkeepers that are older than you and that have more experience than you, and you're going to be with them every single day. So whether you think you're better than them or not, the reality is they have more experience than you, and that is wisdom that they can uh, partake on you or that you can learn from them. So I think picking their brains, uh, learning from them, learning from the coach, just for it's, you know, freshman year, it's, it's um, there's a lot going on. It can be overwhelming at times um, because you're in a new environment, school, whatever. Um, but I think 
you just have to try to take everything in uh, and try to take the positives from everything. Uh, so taking in a lot from the goalkeeper, you know, a lot from the goalkeeper coach, and then how can you learn from the other goalkeepers um, throughout the session? Watch what they're doing. When it's not your rep, watch what they're doing. And is that, do you like what they're doing? Do you think that that's beneficial? And if it is, can you do it? Or can you get better at it? Um, and I think, you know, overall, there's always going to be somebody that's better than you at something. Uh, so if you can take parts of their game and, you know, add that to your game, uh, and that's huge. And then also just like establish yourself, establish yourself as the player that you want to be. And, and how do you want the team to view you? Do you want the team to view you as, you know, the hard worker, uh, the competitor, uh, like what, what do you, what do you want to be known as? And, and really just, you know, kind of go all in on it because, you know, there's, I think if, if you work hard, if people respect what you do, they're going to respect you and you're always going to find a place in the team then. Awesome. Great answer. Great. That's fantastic. Um, at what age did you become a, a goalkeeper? That was, that was all you were going to do. What, when did you kind of make that decision? I think um, at 12 or 13 is when I became a goalkeeper versus a field player. Uh, but then it was in high school was when I had quit my other sports or stopped playing my other sports. Um, uh, th like that required a lot of time. Uh, I continued, I actually picked up squash in high school, uh, which was kind of on the side, uh, similar to racquetball. And I think that was, amazing for me because it involves a lot of footwork um and it's great fitness uh great goalkeeper fitness because it's you know short uh short choppy things you can be precise movements with your feet um but I, so i think having other sports uh to you know to kind of diversify the muscle movements and and things like that are are huge uh but as far as uh goalkeeping was the the thing that i wanted to do it was when i was about 15. 1415. Okay, great. Um, and then um, the last question here, I think is a really good one to end on. Um, what is the, what's your favorite moment of your career so far? And that doesn't necessarily have to necessarily be a, as a pro, it, you know, this is a, a lifelong yeah. sport. So what, what is the best moment of your career so far? I would have to say it's between, wow. I, playing in, in Germany was an amazing one, um, but I, I think that's one of the best best memories. But I think the best moment I would have to narrow it down to two. Uh, one of them was in college at L so we my sophomore or junior year at Dartmouth. We went down to Notre Dame and played Notre Dame, and they just played us off the park. Uh, they they killed us. They were such a good team. They won the national championship the year before. Uh, or two years before, one of the two, uh, but they were, they were very, very good. Uh, and I always had so much respect for them. And then my year at Louisville, they were then in our conference and they were the number one team in the nation at the time. And they came down and played us. And uh, we, sh I had, I had a, a good save in the end. I shut them out. We won one zero. Um, so I think getting a bit of redemption on Notre Dame uh, and the fact that we got a shutout at home, it was a huge league game for us. And it was, uh, I, they were the number one team in the nation at the time. Uh, so it was, that was an incredible feat. Uh, I, that was definitely one of the best moments of my career. Uh, along, along with it that year, we actually beat Syracuse, who had knocked me out of the tournament uh, at Dartmouth the year before, beat them 1-0. Uh, so that was another good feeling. I had some, had some good revenge uh, moments my year at Louisville. But then uh, my, my debut in the MLS was, was an amazing moment, uh, I think, because that is, that is what I'd always dreamed of. Uh, and especially after, you know, not playing my first year, is I was kind of so afraid of being in the league, you know, being able to tell my kids, yeah, you know, I you know, was a pro, but I had never played a game. Uh, so I think getting, you know, which is still, you know, a huge accomplishment, but getting to play a game and play really well. I think I had had eight saves that game. Uh, like I said, I was man of the match. Um, I, I had some a few really good saves. Uh, it was definitely one of the best moments uh, I would say like as career wise goes, that's kind of like when all my dreams came to fruition uh, and definitely one of the highlights of my life. Awesome. 
And it was in, in a Salt Lake, which was a sellout crowd. Or not, I don't know if it was sold out, but it was packed. And they had, it was a white out. So everybody was wearing white. So you look around and the whole stadium is in white. Uh, they were a good team. It was, yeah, that was, was a great time. Awesome. I mean, I, I, that's fantastic. Sounds like, you know, you've had a, a great career so far and some am amazing moments. And, you know, I, I know I speak for all of us here, including EV, but we, we can't wait to see uh, where you continue to go. Um, and, you know, I, I, it, I'll ask you right now, but uh, we'd love to have you back on, maybe dive a little deeper into what it's like uh, at the Sounders now, uh, you know, day in the life type thing. And uh, maybe once things get kind of rolling again, uh, and we can dive into maybe some more topics like training and what it's like working with another Stefan, uh, Stefan Fry, <laughs> and uh, another kind of local guy in Trey Muse and what that goalkeeper union is. Maybe we can dive a little deeper into that at some point down the road. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be, uh, I'm telling a little chatty, so I'm, I'm always happy yeah. to be on here and impart some wisdom. Yeah, fantastic. Um, but again, thank you again, Stefan, for, for joining uh, Evie and I tonight and, and the Tennessee Soccer Club goalkeepers. Um, you know, just so you know, you have made our attendance record tonight. Uh, we are right. out of right. 80 tonight, so we crushed 80. it. So that is uh, absolutely yeah. fantastic. Uh, <laughs> considering we have, uh, you know, officially we have about 125 goalkeepers if we include all of our younger, young, young ones. And, you know, we even were able to pull in some of the high school boys who aren't even in season. So thank you. Thank you again so much. Uh, Evie, I'll let you wrap us up tonight. Uh, there's a couple of things that I want to make sure that we get across to the, to the kids. Um, and one of the reasons that, that uh, Lou and I talked and, and wanted to get Stefan on here is, you know, Stefan started where you guys are, you know, he was a, he was a kid who decided he wanted to be a goalkeeper and uh so, you know, don't think that it's not attainable. It's attainable, you, you know, but you've heard just a small parcel of what is necessary to achieve your goals. you got to work at it. you got to be humble. You've got to be uh, confident in yourself. And you have to have the ability to be honest with yourself and say, I need to improve playing with my feet or playing with my left foot or playing with my right foot. Or as Stefan just said, I, I, I want to improve my power step. You know, and you, and you do that on your own. You don't need me or Lou or anybody else to do that. You do that on your own. And the other thing I'd leave us with is, guys, you know, Coach Lou and I and Stefan and everybody we talk to, we have a, a, a font of knowledge about the position. And we'll tell you all of the abstract parts. But don't forget, it's a pretty simple position, right? Your job is to keep the ball out of the goal, catch it if you can, and after you catch it, don't give it back to the other team, you know, and if you can do that consistently and, and play with your feet, of course, you'll be okay. Uh, and so we want to thank, we want to thank Stefan for taking the time to share with us. We, we, as Lou said, we'd love to have you back. Uh, um, we would be remiss here if we didn't thank coach Dean Blaine for everything he's done for our club. He's a great guy. We, Lou and I have both enjoyed working with him uh, throughout our throughout the time we've been here and we wish him nothing but the best in his move. But, uh, uh, Stefan, thanks again for, for coming and, uh, we'll be in touch. And I think Lou's idea of having you back and sort of taking us through the life of a pro at, at, at Seattle would be a, a great thing. Yeah. And if I can add to what you said uh, real quick, uh, I remember my first camp I was with you. I, I felt, I don't know if you remember Christian Faust. Uh, he was another yes. guy that was sent to you. I, I felt completely in his shadow. Uh, I remember he was, he was very good at 11, 12 years old. Uh, and I, I felt, you know, like I was nowhere close to him. Uh, and then we, you know, came, I came back, to, both came back to camp next year. Uh, and I was a little bit closer. And I think the next year we were, we were pretty close. Uh, and then I think, you know, I, I just kept working, kept working, getting closer, you know, chipping away. Uh, and, eventually, you know, eventually surpassed him and, uh, went on to, uh, you know, I think we both went different, different directions. Uh, and I, but I think it's, it's important to note that I never made, I never made a state ODP team and I tried every single year. I like, I was in the shadow of many other players growing up. Uh, I never could have gone, you know, to a big school and I couldn't even, I couldn't even play at a small division one school my freshman year. Um, I wasn't really getting recruited by many other schools. 
Uh, so it's like my successes, have, I've not always been a, a incredibly elite player. It's not like, you know, the path was paved for me, uh, I think. But working with guys like EV uh, on my own, you know, other friends, it's, it's the work that changes it. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's never a clear pathway. There's always going to be rocks, rocks along the way. Uh, and it's, it's so important to, you know, let anybody that, you know, laughs. I, I remember so many people used to tell me when I was a kid, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a professional soccer player. And they're laughing at me, you know, every time somebody would laugh at me, that's more motivation. I said, okay, well, what else do you want to do? No, no, no I want to be a pro soccer player. Uh, and I think that every time somebody, you know, discounts your goal is, is another, okay, I have to do this now. I, I need to prove this person wrong. Um, and I, I think it's, it's important to never count yourself out uh, because as soon as you count yourself out, it's done for. I think that's uh, the perfect way to, uh, to leave us, um, Stefan. That is, um, you know, it's the truth and it's, it's great for our, for our players to hear. And I think it's great for some of us coaches to remember as well. So, um, again, we can't thank you enough. We look forward to having you back on and, um, stay safe and yeah. I can't wait to see you on the field. You too. Thanks for having me. Take care guys. Thank you. All right. See you guys later. Coach Lou. Thanks a lot. Coach Dino. Best of luck. We'll talk to you next week when we have Adelaide Gay from Norway. Yeah. And FYI, that'll be a different time. It'll be 2 PM because of the time change. Um, so we'll get that out. Thanks guys. Have a good All right, night. guys. Stay safe.